Hi guys and welcome to another video on the wonderful Roland Gay Synthesizer. I promised that I was going to review the Graw Editor and it's even better than I thought it would be. The Graw Editor is free and when you download it, it's just a plain exe file which you can put in any dire directory. But before you run it, you need to download the Java Development Suite. Just go to java.com and download the latest Java and your Graw Editor will run quite fine. Then you can even put a link to the exe file on your desktop to start it up. There is nothing to install. You simply run the file that you download and make sure that the Java is on your system. Oh, the one other thing you'll need to do, of course, is to make sure that you've installed the MIDI drivers so that you can in fact have communication between your Gaia and your computer. The MIDI drivers are downloadable from the Roland site for whatever operating system you have or if you have the CD you simply install the drivers, plug in the game and it says you should plug it in and you're up, up, up and away. Once you've got everything running the next thing you might want to do is tap on the button over there that you see that says reload on the right. When you do that, when you tap that button reload instantly it reads whatever is in your Gaia's temporary area. So just put in a preset patch, click the reload button there on the screen and presto in the common area you will see your patch name. Right now we're looking at the system parameters but over here on the left side you see that we have the temporary area, the temporary patch area right under the system parameters and there you can see there's the patch name right there whatever patch you're dealing with and then of course along the top here we have tabs for tone 1, 2, 3 as you might expect that shows you all the parameters so you certainly can um, load any of the preset or user patches into the gear sorry, into the computer um, that way. But what you will probably want to do is you'll probably want to set it so that whatever knobs or, or sliders you move on the gear, it affects directly the patch and that way you can actually see the digital values of the particular analog position of your knobs and sliders. Okay, I turned off the air purifier so that we can have a little less background noise in the video. Now, because the Gaia does not have a display, uh, these various lights that you see, these pretty colorful lights that are involved in the, in the operation of the virtual analog behavior, also serve as indicators of various parameters uh, that you set in the system mode. All Gaia into a SysX transmit mode so every time I move a slider, turn a knob, touch a button it will be transmitted out on SysX so that it will register in the GRAW editor so that we may actually see the numeric value of all the settings. In order to do that we hold down the cancel shift button and we press the V-Link button here. So we hold down cancel shift and press V-Link. When we do that, all the, but all the lights on the Gaia are flashing. We have actually put the Gaia into a program mode where we can change parameters. Every single light that's illuminated on the Gaia is now flashing and that is very significant because this allows us to set parameters. We press the play stop button that's flashing and we look at the effects on off button. When we press the play stop button, 
the effects on off button is on. If we press the play stop button and we touch the effects on off button it will go dark and then it will be in the off mode. So if you want to see if your TX edit is being transmitted or not you touch the play stop button and because the light is on, because the effects on off light is on, that means we have turned it on. But the factory default is off. So you want to hold the play stop button, press the effects edit button to turn it on. And that way every time you move a slider or a knob, the value will be transmitted. Now to get back to our regular mode of keyboard playing, we simply touch the cancel shift button again the lights stop flashing and we are back to normal operation of our gear so now you can move anything and it will work but you want to be specific so let's move the mouse up here and let's click on tone 3 and let's scroll down on some of the tone 3 parameters let's find something to change and change it. We're going to change the amp envelope DK time. Amp envelope DK time that you see there. So we go on the gear and we find the DK lever for the amp and we move it up. We move it up and down and up and you should have seen it change on the screen. So while listening to your sound of course you can create whatever wonderful sound you want on your gear uh, by twiddling, fiddling, turning, twisting, moving and punching and when you get the sound to be exactly what you want you've made your precious patch all the numbers, the actual digital information that relates to the actual values, digital values of all your analog sliders and um, uh, knobs is right here in your gear. Uh, and it's on the screen right there on your computer. So what do you want to do next? Well, you're going to want to save you want to want to save your wonderful patch that you've just spent so much time creating. Well, the procedure to save it on the gear is pretty straightforward. But what about if you want to save it in your computer and then load it back into the gear? So how do we do that? Well, you see over here where it says library. You have a little library thing over here where my mouse is pointing. The location of that library within your system, your computer system, is in the account that you are in and in the document section there is a folder called gear with a subfolder called library and uh, if I click on library notice it tells you that up there in the words it tells you where to find this library folder and you navigate to that library folder to save your patch. So uh, you can do that uh, here. You can go back. And uh, then what do you do? You go up here and you click File, Save As, Save Patch As. Then you put in the name of your patch. You name it. And it's automatically saved in that library folder. To get a patch saved on the computer into your gear, you bring it first bring it into the temporary area here. Then you go up and you click the save. Now it's a little bit deceiving because when you click the save button, nothing appears to happen. But all that actually happens is that all the numbers here that you may have stored in a particular patch on your library on the computer get transferred to the temporary location or playable location within the gear. So if you touch the keyboard after pressing that save button essentially your computer patch will be playing on your gear but it won't be saved on the gear. 
it's still saved in the computer. So if you want to save it on the gear, you have to save it on the gear in the normal way. The procedure to save a patch on your gear is perfectly straightforward. You press the right button, right button, then you press the user patch, the bank number, and then the actual button number in that bank, and then finally you press the right button again and it's saved. You may prefer to save your Gaia patch in the USB memory. So if you have a USB memory stick installed and formatted, instead of pressing the, uh, the user patch button, you press the right, then you press this button here, turn on the USB memory, then you select the bank and number of the patch and press the right button and it writes to the USB memory instead of the internal memory. The gay is a wonderful little animal but you can get confused with all these various buttons and it's a little more difficult to remember all these various things than navigating with a menu. But you save the menu problem and reduce the problem with having a display and everything into having all these pretty little flashing buttons which are quite colorful and entertaining. The one thing that you cannot do in the draw in the Graw editor is actually to be able to change the parameters themselves. Uh, there is no way that, for example, that you can click on these various parameter parameters and change them in the Graw editor itself. In order to change everything, it has to be done on the actual gear. But that's a very small limitation and not really too much significant because the temporary area which is here on the computer um, can easily be put into the Gaia's temporary area. It's the same type of thing. You make all your changes and then bring it back into here into this temporary area by using the save and reload button. Reload brings the temporary area on the Gaia into this and save puts whatever's here into the Gaia. So in actual fact, having to make changes to the various parameters on the gear itself rather than in the computer with the mouse is not really a big disadvantage at all. Finally guys, I want to make a big shout out to Lawrence Holtz, inventor of the Graw Editor, creator of the Graw Editor and all-round genius who has taken the time and trouble to create the Graw Editor using the Java language for our benefit and using all the wonderful SysX features of the Gaia keyboard. Thank you sir, you have done a lot of work and blessed us in the music community by your dedication and tireless contribution to music and to us in particular. And guys, I am just like Mr. Holtz in that I give everything freely to all my beloved users, subscribers, and fans. Thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel, and I hope to see you in the next video.